And the, the wonderful thing about the area group is it will help you an awful to understand why others do things. Because, I mean, that's probably the biggest source of conflict in, in your professional life and in your personal life. When you send your, your husband, say, girls to the fridge to get the butter and he comes back and says, it's not there. And you'll go and point it out and say, what's that? Well, I didn't see it. it seems the way man's brain works, that it's not where he left it, it's officially lost. Um, as is the... And I said to the jock, you've got only one leg, how are you getting on? <laughs> um, some of you I know have done it before, so be patient. Others of you have no idea, and probably you'll come with a certain... Has anybody come with a number on them? Or somebody else put a number on you? So if you could try and forget about it, because often it's a bit like bingo, you're waiting for that number to come up instead of, you know, this is the number to be called. Yeah? Uh, better, the word itself, have you heard it? It's called Enneagram, E-N-N-E-A, <coughs> which is the Greek word for nine. And gram, which is a Greek word, as you all know, for same word as grammar, the Enneagram. True. You might notice at the table, say, if, if the mother might say, have you noticed that, you know, Tommy isn't looking very well lately, and the father says, no, he might notice if he's missing from the table. But that might be as far as it goes. But the woman would have picked up, like, that there's something wrong. She'd be able to read the body language better. It's called intuition. It's a way of knowing without being told. And there's a big concern here about their image. That the question all of the times two, three, and four ask is, who am I? They have a big problem with discovering who they are. I heard of a story recently, I think it happened, the American Airlines Award of the Year went to a, a girl at the control desk where a big, fat American pushed his way up the line, as they call it, and demanded to get on the next flight. And, and you know, the, the lady said, please, will you step back, sir? You know, will you take your place in the line? Look, he said, young lady, he says, do you know who I am? And she picked up the intercom and says, gentleman here at the desk, and he doesn't know who he is. <laughs> so he might be able to help us. And he said to her, using the full word, when he says, F you, he said, and she says, you'll have to wait for that too, sir. <laughs> <laughs> she was given the airline award for her tact. Okay, so they're very concerned about relationships and feelings in different ways. That's the area, they all have that agenda. But they deal with it in three radically different ways. And I give you a brief, just all I can do in the time available, is give you a brief description of each type, how they deal with those issues. Then the next group would be, they're the heart people. Now the next group are called the head people. They're not headers. But they, they overuse their head a lot. They're types five, six, and seven. And they are very much concerned about the language of knowledge. They're the people now who would, you know, if they wanted to find out, they'd read the book, go to the intercom. Internet, yeah? They're the people who would um, ask the why question. They're the people who are probably better diagnostics who are able to diagnose because they're very concerned about how ideas hang together. But they all suffer from a massive insecurity, from a fear, and they deal with that in three different ways. So they use the language of what we call the intellect. They're the kind of people, if they want to find out something, they have to go to an appropriate source of knowledge to discover it. Because in certain ways, they have often a poor sense of, especially one type, of, of inner conviction. The third one, then, is probably the one that you will strike you most. The eights, nines, and ones belong to what we call the gut. The gut. These are the people who just, do you ever see them at a meeting? After about five minutes, they know what to do. None of this talk of setting up committees or reporting back the copalistic. They'd have done when you'd be talking about it. <coughs> and they're very concerned about the issue. They focus very much on the issue. Big concern here with anger. They deal with anger. They almost as the colour of their energy is anger centre, is anger coloured. And they respond to anger in three radically different ways. We look at those first tonight. And they much very use their instinct. What's instinct? Because some people often confuse instinct and intuition. They're very radically different. What's instinct? Instinct is the animal part of us. It, it tells us what to do in a crisis. So if this place went on fire now, it's probably a good person who'd lead us. But don't be asking them head questions. How are we going to get out of here? Say, so shut up. i get you out of here. Just follow me. Okay? So now, the Enneagram would say, what happens is they deal with those kind of issues. And this is very issue-centered. One of them could have a thundering row with you. And five minutes later, it's all over. They want to go out for a drink. Your guts could be on the table after this full Monty. And the person was, what are you on about? To them, it was never about the person or relationship. They focus very much on the issue. And it's important when you're dealing with them that you stay on the issue too, because you often get back and they live with the person and they can't understand what you're talking about. Okay? Now, the Enneagram would say that all of us basically fit into one of those nine types. 
there is a slight addition to it. You also have the energy of one of the numbers either side of you. So that's called, in an agram language, your wing. It's an auxiliary system that, you know, it's like the, the sidecar and the motorbike. It, it comes along with you. So in fact, there are 18 types, but we'll settle for nine at the moment. The wing does modify your, your centre. And again, all, all of that is chosen as part of the hand that nature has, has dealt to you, okay? The types I give you are simply descriptive. One isn't any better than the other. And the goal is conversion within the type. Whatever type you are, I'm afraid you're that for life. I used to talk about Mrs. Thatcher once she was, I suppose, preaching on a platform. She said, I was born an English woman, I have lived in an English woman, and I shall die as an English woman. And an Irish voice came from the crowd, have you no ambition at all? He said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so the descriptions are, are purely descriptive, and we grow within our type. It's almost, we do that by recognising the compulsion or the passion that drives us. And then, then having recognised, we begin to see it's destructive. It's actually stopping us from growing. And we look at how it can help us to overcome it. Um, the chances are you will recognise others before you recognise yourself. That's the amazing thing about it. Those of you who have done it, you can pick up people like that. And you'd have great fun, I think, at the medical profession, people come into your surgery. I Honestly, I guarantee you, it'll save you hours of frustration. But once you oh God, here's one of that type. And there's one type especially called the drama queens. Oh God, what do you hear doing so much? Jesus, tell me about it. Yeah, it'll save you hours in your practice. And, and if you have any hair left, it'll, it'll save it. Yeah? Um, this suggests that you be over 25 before you do it, which would eliminate half the group here tonight. Sorry, I'm to leave, yeah. yeah, the say until you come to 25, you haven't formed the full force of your, you haven't recognized the full force of your compulsive personality, or you live in the kind of illusion that you can change yourself. Well, as you know, that's a lot more difficult to do with it than we realize. And the last thing I'd say is when you have it done, and I hope that you might get to do the full course, that it is an old, you might say, why didn't I do it years ago to save so much frustration? But it's a lovely saying in the East, when the pupil is ready, the teacher appears. And it is great wisdom that for some reasons, we have in our Christian scriptures, there's a time for everything under heaven, time to be born, time to die, time to do the Enneagram. And for somebody that has come tonight. So what I do is I just give you a, a bird's eye view of the nine types.